has done in this house. Praise God forevermore. Wow. I'm so blessed by this song already. Wow. You know, churches have to go back to singing hymns. Churches have to go back to these sacred and holy words. To you be all the praise, King of Kings. Lift your right hands to the King of Kings. Lord, we are ready for you today. We surrender all and we mean it. We told you yesterday we will never say what we don't mean anymore. Told you on Thursday we will never say what we don't mean anymore. We surrender all and we are ready to surrender all. To you, to your glory, to your kingdom. Thank you for this beautiful season. We declare this evening again your word enlightens our eyes of understanding and finds absolute expression and your dominion reigns supreme in our human spirits. We declare today, everyone watching, you see Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Once again, I want to thank my wife for being with me. And, and you know, the song you sang today is so important because um, when I look at the first verse, for instance, it says, all to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him. I will live in his presence daily. Now, this is exactly what people say in Psalm 23. They say, we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever, and they don't mean it. In um, verse 2 of this same song, it says, All to Jesus I surrender. Humbly at his feet I bow. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. Now, when people re uh, uh, sing these words, I think they mean something like, um, God, um, I, I forsake my sins, or something like that. But, you know, you're going to see it in a different light today because this song is for ministry. It's not really for salvation. Yes, it's not really for salvation because he says, All to him I freely give in verse 1. Now in verse 2 he's saying, he's saying, Worldly pleasures all forsaken. I'm going to show you. In, in verse um, 3, right? All to Jesus I surrender. Lord, I give myself to thee. Fill me with thy love and power. What do you want the power for if not for evangelism? Yeah, that's it. Then verse 4 says, All to Jesus I surrender. Now I feel the sacred flame. Please, is the sacred flame for, for church members? The flame is for the altar. The flame is for frontline operation in ministry. He says, Oh, the joy of full salvation. Glory, glory to his name. When you get to win souls, there's no joy that replaces it. So today, I want to tell, talk to you about the three professionals of Paul. The three professionals of Paul. Those who were something else in the world, but they were very useful for ministry. Because people don't know that Paul had very important people working for him in ministry. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you, you know, we all know Luke's and Luke. And I'm going to read to you from Colossians chapter 4 to show you about Luke. Colossians chapter 4. Let's take it from verse number 10. Verse number 10. He says, Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, saluteth you. And Marcus, sister's son to Barnabas, touching whom ye received commandments. If he come unto you, receive him. Now, that, this was the time when uh, Mark was still with them and Barnabas. That was when they wrote Colossians. Verse 11. And Jesus, which is called Justus, who are of the circumcision. When you see circumcision, it means they are Pharisees. These only are my fellow workers unto the kingdom of God. These only are my fellow workers unto the kingdom of God. That is, there are fellow workers who are not unto the kingdom. For instance, he didn't say we are fellow sweepers. He didn't say we are fellow ushers. When it, it, it does not affect a soul, when there is no eternal deposit in a soul, there is no, no floor you sweep in the church. I told you in the month of access last month that 
you, you are not going to get anything. Those who are gate men and security men and um, ushers and all those helps ministries, they are all these people who are relegated because they don't want to go to the altar. So somebody might have told you that the altar is not meant for you or you're not going to the altar. They all only said all that to glorify themselves as the most important people in the church, pastors, and that's wrong. Everyone is a glorified child of God. You are going to be shocked when you get to heaven and discover that many bishops are not going to be found around the throne. They'll be found in a congregation because they were kings of nothing. Mind you, the, 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 you know, people can even be many in a church and the GO had nothing to do with their coming in. The people who brought them in are going to be the ones that are going to receive the blessing. So, it's not by somebody gratifying himself or glorifying himself and putting you down. No. Verse 12 says, Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluteth you, always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. That you may stand perfect. So th th this church, these leaders were all for the perfection of their people. They prayed for them for perfection like we do pray for our kids, our children, our spiritual children for perfection. We pray for them that they fulfill all the will of God. Verse 13. For I bear him record that he has a great zeal for you and them that are in Laodicea and them in Heropolis. Verse 14. This is where I'm going. Luke, the beloved physician and Demas greet you. Now, Demas was also with them at this point. That's why I'm, I'm glad to start with Luke, really. Because Luke, a physician, means Luke was a doctor, a medical doctor. Let me say this to you. In this church, in the early church, every professional saw himself first as a minister of the gospel before his profession. Every minister of the gospel in this time they could be businessmen, they could be professionals, doctors, engineers, lawyers, but they were first ministers. Today's professionals are firstly professionals. In some other religion, you see, some people, you know, I was listening to the news yesterday and they said something, they were trying to tell the president because, you know, he recently chose another chief of staff. So, um, because he chose a new chief of staff, they were trying to say that the president has to be sensitive to the um, uh, yearnings of the people, of the populace, that um, the people uh, are sensitive to uh, religious uh, bigotry that is going on in the nation, that they are saying things like Islamizing the nation. One thing, folks, you need to realize, nobody is Islamizing anything. Nobody Islamized Quara State, for instance, where we are in right now. Nobody Islamized it. It is the Christians that will do nothing that made all these things to become prevalent. Because they understand that they are first Muslims before they are Hausas, before they are Ibus, before they are Yorubas, before they are Arabs. They are first Muslims. Christians are first Yorubas before they are Christians. You can see the other priority. So it makes it look like they want to Islamize the nation. The Muslims watching me right now, they know I'm saying the truth. They are not trying to Islamize anything because they don't evangelize. The thing just works because you are firstly it before anything else. But Christians, tell them that you are first a minister of the gospel. They'll be arguing with you. Now you can see a physician. Now you are not a physician. Maybe you are a fabricator of whatever you fabricate out there and you are still not going to be a minister of the gospel. Think about this. I've told you, the orientation that encourages a man to marry four wives is not the best orientation. He's not going to lead the nation right. He has too many women. He has too many children. He doesn't have a focus for specificity of taking care and raising children. You need to know some of those things are just religion. They are not spiritual. If they are spiritual, they will not need to consult anything for solutions. 
So he was, he was, uh, um, Luke was a physician first before, I beg your pardon, he was a minister of the gospel first. That's why Paul said, Luke greets you. But let me show you something more. Let's, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, I'll take my reading this time again from verse number 9. 2 Timothy 4 and verse number 9. It says, Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. This is Paul talking to Timothy. For Demas hath forsaken me. Now, you saw Demas was with him just a while ago. Now, Demas has forsaken Paul. Having loved this present world. Now, so you see, all the... What's your verse? What's the verse? Um worldly pleasures that's verse 2 right verse 2 worldly pleasures all forsaken now Demas was with Paul which means he was a minister of the gospel himself look what happened for Demas had forsaken me having loved this present world and is departed unto Thessalonica Christians to Galatia Titus unto Dalmatia now you got to see this you got to see this Paul was saying, Demas has loved the present world. I want to ask you a question. Isn't Demas going to wake up in the morning and do his devotion? He's going to pray to God. That's why when people leave us in the work of ministry, they will still pray in the morning. But certainly, they are going to speak in tongues and they are going to even say, maybe God told them one or two things. But, but they have abandoned churches. They have abandoned the souls that they themselves you know, brought to, to, the, to the kingdom. So worldly pleasures are forsaken is not a song for sinners. Because a sinner who just got saved can never forsake all the pleasures at once, if that's what you want to say. So it doesn't even make sense for that. It makes sense for ministry. Because people in ministry, many people today don't believe in ministry and churches because the pastors they see are too materialistic. They still love the pleasures of the world. Somebody say hallelujah. So, you get to verse number 11. He says, only Luke is with me. Only Luke is with me. Luke the physician, the doctor. Isn't he going to hospital? Doesn't he have call? Or is that not what they say? They have a call, a call or something. <laughs> they go for call and they go for so long. But Luke stayed with Paul. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. He's going to take life class. He's going to be winning souls, evangelism. Paul didn't say, oh, he's going to, he's going to cook for me. Oh, he's going to be my usher. That's not how to be profitable. Everybody can, can be, we don't even use ushers. Once the word of God starts in the church, we make everybody sit down. You don't move anymore. Now we see preachers on TV while they are preaching. People are just, it's like a traffic. There's even probably hold up in the church. <laughs> <laughs> while the word of God is going on that's wrong, so terrible because God is the word God is the word I want you to jump down to verse number 16 of this 2 Timothy 4 he says at my first answer no man stood with me but all men forsook me I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. I'm telling you, this is so strong. This is so strong. So Paul had Luke with him. He said everybody forsook him you know mark also walked away so there's a minister of the gospel watching me right now listen people might walk away it's all right it's just that they have gone back to the world but they are coming back to you don't be discouraged because nobody's labor is gonna waste because seeds don't perish they are only planted praise God forevermore oh hallelujah let me show you the next professional that Paul had before they tell me my time is up in Titus chapter 3 Titus chapter number 3 the second professional they say you go to school study a professional course you know something like that 
Titus chapter number 3 and in verse number 12 it says when I shall send Adamas unto thee or Tychicus be diligent to come unto me to Nicopolis for I have determined there to winter bring Zenas the lawyer and Apollos on their journey diligently that nothing be wanting unto them. You remember some days ago, I was reading to you, and I told you most of the things that God, uh, I beg your pardon, that Paul told Timothy, he told Titus. Very, very important. Very, very important. You see now, he told, didn't he tell Timothy to come to him? See him telling Titus now. Go back to verse 12. When I shall send Adamas unto thee, or Tychicus, be diligent to come unto me to Nicopolis. He told Timothy to come. Then he's telling Titus to come. There are some of these guys that worked with Paul permanently. They stood with him. They stayed with him. They lodged with him. They traveled with him. They wrote for him in prison and all that. But there were those who were also professionals that he said, he said, I know um, Zenas, I know you're going to have some law cases to attend to in the courts but I need you to come work with me we have some evangelism and some life classes to do so even though he was a lawyer he was first a minister of the gospel he was a professional lawyer and they were telling Titus to bring him he said Titus bring him here how many pastors today can tell some professors in their church and say come not like um, I mean post office come from um, challenge no come from another nation come from another city and you'll be with me for some days he talked about wintering that is I want to winter with you I want to lodge with you I want to spend some time with you and the last person I want to talk about is Philemon because Philemon was a businessman if you go through the book of Philemon, because of Onesimus, who was um, a crook that worked with uh, Philemon, because he was a businessman, so he said, I know he has stolen your money in your business. So Paul had businessmen, professional businessmen, who were billionaires. But they were first ministers of the gospel. So are you a professional today? And have you been deceived that God cannot use you or you think the only way God can use you is for you to just pay money? By the way, how much money have you even given God? Because we discovered that professionals are not usually givers. Because everything is calculated. They are professionally, you know, divided the salary. This is how much it's, it is. This is how much we yeah, we partition it. And then they do all the calculations. And one thing they always forget is that every calculation is minus God. Because once you put plus God on your calculations, you will see how you give. It will be different. And God never works with calculations. He works with exponential and geometrical increase in our lives. As a professional, and who claims to be a child of God, the word I got to you today is that you are first a minister of the gospel. And then you can be a professional in any other field. You know, today is Saturday, so we can't really spend much time because we know people have things to do. And tomorrow is Sunday. So tomorrow is going to be a very beautiful service. Make sure you are in that service. You're not going to lose a thing of the glory and the blessings of God. And I got to tell you this. You see, intelligence is not like a device that you plug into power. Intelligence is like you are a container and they keep pouring into you. So every day we come to you this way with the way the world is, you know, the whole thing is going up and down. They say they want to flatten the curve. Before you know it, the curve has gone up again. <laughs> so what you've got to do, keep taking these words in. You will see that you'll be assured in the Lord because your names are written in the book of life. Before we leave, I want you to worship the Lord right now. Just say, Lord, I worship you. I'm a professional. I'm going to be a professional. I'll be your minister. First, your kingdom will be propagated through me. Your kingdom will prevail through me. Why? Because I surrender all to you. My darling, can you give me, can you give me that verse again? 
He says in verse 4, all, verse 3 now, to Jesus I, I surrender. So when you sing it now, you got a minute. Lord, I give myself to Thee. Now He's going to fill you with love for humanity. Love to win souls. everything when you got into it it deprived you of the glory and the anointing and the ministry that God firstly made you when you get to heaven before the throne of God you are not going to be saying Lord this is my CV has been a medical doctor has, has been an engineer has been a lawyer all these professional things people talk about has been a professional businessman no what you're gonna to take to the Lord is the salvation of souls that is the only thing that counts before the Lord and if you're a child of God and you know what I'm saying is true please take a step there is a number on the screen. We are going to help you, though a professional, but we are going to make sure that your CV in heaven is not broken. If not, you will have lived for everything in this world and lived for nothing of the kingdom. You know what? We got to go now. They're telling us it's time of and time of and time. So tomorrow, don't forget, we're going to be in church again. It's so beautiful. I'm sure you were blessed by yesterday. We were blessed by two days ago. Tomorrow is a better day in this beautiful season. And all of you who have been given, we want to give in. We thank you so much. We thank you. Your giving is doing so much. It's helping us. We spend so much to make these things happen. In this part of the nation where we are in, you have to spend a lot on power. You spend on gadgets. You rent some things. But we already bought some things. And we are getting better at it every day. And those of you who have been sharing the videos, I, I, I'm going to leave a word to those who have been sharing the videos. I declare you will not be alone. I declare you are going to be known for good. Amen. I declare you are blessed. Amen. I declare in heaven your account will swell. Amen. And there will be harvest for you even here on earth. Amen. I prophesy on you sharing these videos to pages. Some people share it to um, groups that they are in. That people will say, what kind of stupid thing are you sharing? Everybody is sharing news, uh, fake news, Jesus rumors and all that. You are sharing Jesus. And I declare your CV, you will be recommended in high places where you are necessary. And you are needed. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. We love you with the love of Christ. We're going to see you again tomorrow morning. Bye bye.
all of my battles out. Don't have to act so formal. Taking the world by force. Don't have to be so normal. So great I see that lives in me. Great I see that lives in me. You don't have to believe in me. God's what's enough for me.